Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today we're taking a look at moving platforms. And uh, what we want to focus on here is the basics of the moving platform so that our character can jump on the platform, move along with the, the platform smoothly and not bounce around and be able to jump off of the platform. And uh, that's really the important features that we want to have here. So let's take a look at the, uh, the essentials. First off, um, in the description, I've got a download for a prefab that is a moving platform. Um, and you can go ahead and import that as an asset or drag it directly into your prefabs if you want. And uh, I just want to show you some of the details of what the moving platform is made up of so that you can start to use it, one, as a moving platform, but as a number of other things, too. Um, so, moving platform. First thing is, I've got an empty object here um, that I've called moving platform. And inside of this empty object, if we take a look, um, we've got a position A and a position B. Now, the position A is actually made up of the tiles that create your platform. So all those tiles are um, connected to position A here. They're children of position A. And then position A and position B are children of the moving platform. So it's just basically one big folder, another folder, and then another folder. Now, position B doesn't have anything in it. It's actually an empty, um, empty object. And uh, that empty game object is actually the reference point for the moving platform. So position A would be the starting position. So if you look over here, we've got the, uh, the starting position in the scene. And then position B, I've set up down below here. And that means that from position A, it'll move directly to this in a straight line. And of course, you can make this move sideways. You can make this move any direction that you want. And of course, this same exact concept could be applied to something other than a platform. So on the platform itself, there are a few other elements that are important to make this all work. On the moving platform, you have a platform movement script that you'll need to drop on there. And actually, it'll be included with the prefab, so you won't have to do that. But if you were going to take something else and make it move, you would use the platform movement script to actually create that movement. Now, another necessity is on the overall folder that you've got all of your objects in, you have to include a rigid body. And the rigid body allows you to apply the physics to it so that it'll start moving. Next up in position A, where all of our tiles are, you have your basic box collider and then you have a platform effector. Notice that the box collider is used by the effector and then you've got the platform effector here in 2D. The important part here, which is how the code is written for this particular platform, a lot of platforms you land on them and then you bounce as it goes down. Uh, this platform you actually become part of it as you jump onto it. But to make that happen, you have to include in the collider mask you have to have platform checked and falling checked. What that means is that when your character is falling it will interact with the platform um, and then also when your character lands on the platform they the character or your player becomes part of the platform they become a child of it. Um, this is all made possible because we have to create some layers. Now this is a necessity to do. Um, this won't happen when you import your prefab, so you'll have to go in and manually do this. Now the layers that we're talking about are platform and falling. If you don't have those, which most likely you won't, you're going to go in here and you're going to create those layers. And we've been in this area before when we created tags and sorting layers, but now we're in the layers layers. and your first available layer is, player, is layer 8, and that's going to be your platform layer. And then plat layer 9 is going to be your falling layer. Um, you get those two layers in there. They are case sensitive because they refer back to some of the code that's in the platform movement script um, and also in your player script as well. So that all gets kind of updated so that your player can interact with those things. Um, that being said, we could take the same exact idea and we could tie it to perhaps like a moving saw. Now you can see the same exact principles here. I've got a moving saw folder. I've got a rigid body on there. I got the platform movement script. I've got a sprite render and I've got an animator on there to get the moving saw actually, um, actually animated itself so it spins. I've got a position A and a position B. The position A is just the sprite that makes up the saw. 
and you can see that it's got a circle collide on there and I put my saw script on there too which was previously included in one of the tutorials here um, but that'll allow this the saw to actually spin um, 360 degrees and then it will move from point A to point B so if we take a look at this here's my position B right up here and position A is down here and when I hit play you'll see that saw moving between the two points here so the same exact idea as the platform but now I've got it tied to a saw here's another rendition of this where I tied it to an object but the way that I tied it to the object, I didn't put the, I didn't put it right in the center of the object so that it's rotating around the center. It's rotating around one of the outer edges. I thought it just added a little bit something different. And of course, lots of different ways. We could make an entire wall or um, platform move as if it's collapsing or it's moving up and down. However you want to use this, get creative with it. But a lot of possibilities here, and I'm hoping you uh, get a chance to use that. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye.